Ah, so <laughs> we get a little bit more into our bad guys this week. Yay! Oh, that's one of the big things that happens. Also, the review board finally happens. They just one of the review board members had to go out of town, so they moved it up till the following morning. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, which I think is one of the definitely one of the big highlights of this particular week. Um, ah, stupid iPad. Yes, I keep my notes on my iPad, and sometimes email pops up. But um, but yeah, at the review board, the big things that happen. Uh, starts off with Dr. Jones, Dr. Tony Jones, oh yeah, uh, um, you know, he goes on about how, how, you know, if the procedure, if Joe's procedure hadn't happened when it did, Audrey very well could have died, that sort of thing, you have to make that decision, yada, 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 and everybody saying things about Joe, and the board seemingly being quite understanding from the looks of it. Despite like one or two questions, there's like that one guy that's just off to the side, just being a smart ass. It's like, what the fuck, dude. Ah, uh, you know, and everybody except for like Chris and Eve stand up for Joe too. It's like, yeah, you know, we were all kind of, uh, yeah, we were kind of with him on this when we either helped him or we encouraged him to do it. Um, you know, and you know, they mentioned the sterilization angle. Chris, I don't know what the hell he was thinking. It's like. Well, yeah, he did it, but, you know, he, he had a maniac with a gun to his head, uh, forced him to do it. Yeah, that's it. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? Uh, so, yeah. But uh, but in the end, uh, you know, for the past couple of weeks, Karen had been looking for some kind of lawyer to come and help. And I'm sitting there thinking, Scott's a lawyer. Scott's a lawyer. Scott's going to end up doing it. I was right. Scott ended up going in. And he made the remark about... Um, Oh, about uh, like like war, you know, combat medics and everything. You have to make quick judgments there and all of that stuff. And well, quite frankly, that situation with Cooper at the, in the pilot episode—that's pretty much it. It's like, boom, you know, you're in a combat situation. You got a maniac with a gun who killed, you know, Doctor Redshirt and knocked the hell out of Nurse Audrey and, and and caused the situation to begin with. You didn't know what was going to happen. He could have just flipped his shit and shot everybody, including himself. Who knows? You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And so Joe acted quickly, as, as well did everybody else, and saved her life in the end. You know, they at least had to try, which I think everybody kind of understood that. And, and of course, it took Scott to come in and say, hey, you know, yeah, combat shit. And he's like, oh, <laughs> you have to be reminded not everybody is in the safe hospital walls when they're practicing medicine, which is, which is a matter of fact, too. Oh. And Audrey comes in at the end. She's like, you know, I, I, I should probably still be in bed, but you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not only thank him, I'm going to speak very highly of him. And, and of course, Joe's reinstated. <laughs> as, as if anybody could have thought anybody different, any differently at this point. Um, but, yeah, Joe's reinstated. Hooray! Um, uh, uh, do I have any, uh, any other notes for the uh, review board? No, not really. <laughs> um, nice to see like crossovers with General Hospital again. They 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 did this a lot more at the beginning, and uh, apparently this was coming up on Nurses Ball time. <laughs> Favorite time of the year on General Hospital. I'm glad they brought it back a couple of years ago, and that it's a regular thing now. Um, but um, and they talk a little bit about the Nurses Ball. Even uh, Karen, who is married to Jagger Cates, who is the older brother of Stone Cates who had previously passed away due to complications from AIDS and you know they started it in his honor and in his memory and, and of course it's grown so much and you get a cameo from his sister I didn't realize they had a sister who knew um, I know that the two of them were brothers but um but I didn't realize that they had a sister uh, I don't know if the nurses ball plays much more than a framing device for this uh, kidnapping plot, but it is mentioned a lot, and Lucy, of course, has the nurse's ball t-shirt on, and I kind of like how she, when Lucy was trying to talk to that one lab tech, you know, nurse's ball, just just happens to be right, yeah. <laughs> oh, so speaking of the, the kidnapping plot, we get the first, we get at least the first name of our villain, his name is Rex, and the boy is a, the guy is a voice manipulator. Because you see him talking to Danielle, who is 
begrudgingly working for him at this point. I guess she was desperate. And he talks, you know, just in a normal voice. And at one point, he gets Lucy to meet him in, like, some unused room, or at least at the time it was unused. And he puts on this southern voice, oh, you know. <laughs> and then later on, he has her meet him in a church, in a confessional. Then he puts on a more of an Irish or Scottish accent. I don't know which one I'm going for. I really don't. Uh, although I think if I was to go Scottish, I'd probably try and sound more like Peter Capaldi. So I guess Irish for me. Him, uh, I, maybe he was going for Irish. I don't know. Um, and it turns out that Rex is quite the stalker. Like, he knows everything. Like, he, he even knows that Lucy and Doc are engaged. And Lucy's like, wait, what the fuck? That thing is not public. What the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, so, yeah. Well... You know, and I and I wrote down here you fit in with the likes of group with the group psycho. I I can't even name which group. You insert your own down there. That's your homework. <laughs> oh, oh, and and there was this one line. Nice try. <laughs> you are only going to know what I want you to know. And that made me think. You know. Is he is he an affiliate of like the GOP or the Chinese government or the North Korean government? They're all going to be coming knocking down my door now. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it, it is definitely it, it just. It, I guess that's how they let you know. Yeah, this guy is evil. Well, if if kidnapping Serena wasn't bad enough, you know, and we do get a little moment with Serena and Danielle, who we now know that Danielle was just wearing a wig. In, in taking care of Serena like I think there was like one or two scenes before this whole reveal um, with Danielle and Rex that you know she went in there she cared for Serena and all of that good stuff um, and and of course there's a ransom five million dollars why five million we don't know apparently I don't know why they would need the five million dollars I don't know why Rex would need the five million he seems to be well off at least relatively well off um, Danielle, yeah, desperate, and he makes note that, oh, you could open your own theater, and she's like, I'm not going back to New York, I'm staying here. Are you falling for Jake Marshak? Are you falling for the man you are trying to manipulate? Yes, she is. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, but wait, Chris Ramsey, he, he's one of those that stands out this week, because his sliminess and, 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 and his, his, you know, Put put him put you know looking out for number one ness comes out this week, uh, oh lordy and it's biting him in the ass, like there was, there was a series of tests he needed done, that he needed to get done and delivered back to the chief resident, um, uh, Ellen, and it didn't happen because he wasn't a messenger boy, and according to Ellen somebody died. It's like, um, oops. That's just uh uh no, <laughs> oh no and and yeah, you know because he was trying to make a power play. No, you swallow your goddamn pride, you moron. <laughs> uh, no wonder he took to playing the boss on Saints Row Four. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's not like you know it's a character that that it's a character type he's familiar with. <laughs> Bear in mind this is Nolan North's first role, so you know. And speaking of early, I don't know if this was her early role, but um, I do have to make a note. Like uh, during some of the scenes where Julie and Eve are, are sitting there arguing, uh, the actress who plays Eve just gave it, just gave out some line reads. It's like, are, are you trying to deliver lines or are you reading around the table? Because uh, that was kind of off. But you know, I've seen her later. She does get better, but it's just wow, that was a little off. <laughs> uh uh, but speaking of Julie and Eve, they agree, okay, we're going to live together. And Eve finds out that Julie is loaded up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, Ron White. Oh, God. Just, she's apparently loaded. We don't know how loaded, but she's loaded. Um, you know, having all this designer stuff and... and all of this, all of this other things, you know, they name drop like Calvin Klein is like holy shit. Are, are they are they still relevant nowadays? I don't I don't even think so. Maybe they are. I don't know. I don't pay that much attention to fashion. Um, ma, 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 ma. 
Uh, I think that, well, I don't have any more of my notes, but, um, but then again, this week was memorable enough to where it's like, I don't re really need too many notes. Um, so yeah, uh, what else, what else is there? <laughs> um, you know, of, of course, more character development, more character establishment. Uh, we do learn that, um, uh, Jagger's sister thinks that Karen just up and left him when really they just, you know, they had a conversation about it. And, and her sister, I think her name is Tina, I want to say. I, I think, you know, but she's, you know, feeling lonely and she's just kind of, she's kind of just tossed in there at the end, you know, I guess just to bring more discussion about Stone and, and the nurse's ball history into the mix. Um, you know, she's just wondering, oh no! And of course, Joe overhears that, and he's probably thinking at this point, eh, I might have a chance with Karen now. Oh my! <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. And Frank and Julie having, you know, you know, Frank getting more protective of Julie, and is like, yeah, he likes her. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think... I'm trying to think of any other really memorable moments because, well, we're eventually going to have moments that will top, you know, Joe and Frank screaming in the closet last week. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, and, and, oh, and in terms of the kidnapping, um, what the plan is, the plan is that Rex has Lucy and Scott doing, they're, Scott, no, Rex is wanting to have them do, like, the drop of the $5 million at the nurse's ball somehow. You know, they come up with a plan, they tell Rex the plan, or at least Lucy does, and there you go. And and, and then he'll deliver Serena. Um, the thing is, they can't tell anybody else, not even Doc. And even Doc, you know, now, you know, realizing that Scott can get up the money, and that the ransomer, the, that it's basically the kidnapper, being Rex, is a little too out of the norm. Like, like, why would a ransom, why would you give somebody a week ahead of time to, for, you know, to pull up some money for ransom when you know that that person is loaded anyway? They could just come up with it like that. Why would you do that? Because, you know, you know, throwing the FBI off the trail, of course, but, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, Doc doesn't realize this. And... Oh, and it's already starting to put a strain on the two of them, and it's just, oh, it's not going to end well for them. But that's what happens when you deal with a kidnapper, right? Yeah. So, uh, coming weeks, um, we'll see how all of this plans out. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And this is actually the last one for August. Um, we'll be starting with September, and um, I might change the format. You guys let me know. I mean, if you want me to you know, because I've been I've been actually thinking of putting more clips in, maybe maybe making it more reviewy type instead of vloggy type. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, so I think that's everything there. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like this, you know, you can do the usual like, subscribe, share around. Don't just hoard it like the cheeseburger at the Waffle House. You know, spread it around. Get other people to watch it. It'd be great. <laughs> And I, I do like talking about the show in whatever way we decide to do going forward. Uh, but if you'd like to help out more directly in terms of, of like uh, donations or monetary things or whatever for like like equipment or what have you and all of that really good stuff, then head over to patreon.com slash gomer two one double X. And you know, for as little as one dollar per production you get things earlier or what have you. And if you if you pledge like five dollars or more not only do you get all the goodies below it but you also can get like a little blurb at the end of all of my videos uh that does include this series um the only ones that i wouldn't put anything at would be like update vlogs so and that would be just about it um yeah that that should do it so until next time this is gomer the ranting thespian signing off mm -hmm.